Hello again, Rick here from DxOMark. It all starts with your battery. We at DxOMark are focused on assessing the quality of the smartphone experience with our evaluations of mobile camera, display, and audio quality. But none of these would be possible without power. And so we created our battery protocol. When battery life factors into your smartphone buying decision, you're likely to find that there's not a lot of detailed consumer information available, usually just milliamp hours and charging speed in watts. But at the end of the day, can we really appreciate what's behind these numbers? That's why we felt the need to provide a transparent and fair data set on battery performance. From a user perspective, there is a need for an independent benchmark that they can trust to deliver an unbiased, transparent, and comprehensive battery testing report that compares all brands equally in order to guide them in their purchasing decisions. We also look at our evaluation from a manufacturing perspective, producing the support data manufacturers need to go beyond just milliamp hours and watts. The ExoMark has developed a battery protocol with a consistent approach. We analyze the way people use their phones, what they expect, and what pain points they experience. We then reproduce real-life use cases in robust test environments and design a repeatable protocol with up to 150 hours of testing, resulting in about 70 measurements and 100 parameters that all contribute to compute our final battery score. But how do we understand the battery score? Our battery score is based on three key attributes. First, efficiency or how quickly power gets drained from a battery, accounting for about 17% of the final score. Charging. Duration to a full charge. How much you recover in a quick five minute charge, accounting for 33% of the final score. And finally, autonomy. How long the battery actually lasts, accounting the most, 50% of the final score. Let's take a close look by comparing three phones, which all ranked equally with a score of 89. First, efficiency. This subscore is not only about measuring a user's experience, but also combines product design thinking. From a measurement perspective, it includes two things. One, the charging efficiency of your phone, meaning how much energy is needed to fill up the battery compared to its energy capacity. And two, discharge efficiency, which is the ability to provide more autonomy with a smaller battery. A high efficiency score can bring three key benefits to consumers. The device can be smaller, thinner, lighter, and more sexy. Efficient devices are designed with power efficient components. Efforts have been spent on hardware and software integration, so actually our efficient subscore is also an indicator of the build quality. Efficient devices consume less energy, so good for the planet. All three phones have an excellent efficiency score, and it's important to go even deeper here and analyze the performance in some efficiency subscores. The OnePlus Nord CE is the best for the overall efficiency of a full charge, with 78% with the Vivo Y72 at 70% and the iPhone 13 Pro Max at 65% efficiency. But the iPhone is a clear winner in discharge efficiency. Apple hardware and software are extremely optimized and is more efficient than its competitors in almost all use conditions. Charging performance is also key to your battery experience. Whatever your charging ritual, there will always be situations like a business trip or a long weekend where we have to rely on a quick battery top up. We measure charging time but also monitor the charging power required to fill your battery. We usually plug to a charger before our smartphone powers down. That's why we also test the charging with five minute top-ups at different state of the battery level, at 20%, 40%, 60%, and 80%, as well as in extreme use cases like gaming to really push the batteries to their limit. Here's the three device charging comparisons. OnePlus Nord CE at 83, the winner here, charging from zero to 80% in 42 minutes, and one hour and one minute to full charge. The 13 Pro Max at 73 and the Y72 at 68, both taking more than two hours to reach full charge. The OnePlus Nord CE also recovers almost five hours of autonomy with a quick five minute battery top up, while the Vivo and iPhone recover only about three hours. Many people still have the habit of charging their phone overnight, so autonomy has the biggest weight in our score system. Now, three ways we run the autonomy measurements. First, a typical usage scenario which reproduces a day in the life of an end user. We also complement things with mobile outdoor tests to measure typical behaviors of end users when they are on the go. Shooting photos and videos, making phone calls, using GPS navigation, and checking social media feeds. These two measurements are made with factory default settings to measure the out-of-box experience. Our third test is performed with calibrated settings to compare performance on a similar experience. So screen brightness is fixed to 200 nits, SPL of the speakers is fixed at 60 decibels at 10 centimeters, and the screen refresh rate is fixed at 60 hertz. Here's the three device autonomy comparison. The OnePlus scores lowest here at 76, with the 13 Pro Max scoring an 84, with 64 hours and 68 hours of autonomy and moderate use respectively. 
but the Vivo Y72 scores 91 with 85 hours of autonomy and moderate use, making it the clear winner with more than three days of autonomy. So overall, we can see that in the ultra premium price segment, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is number one by far compared to the competition. Even though it is not a perfect device with very good autonomy, limited charging capabilities, but it is extremely efficient in power consumption. The Vivo Y72 offers great autonomy, limited charging capabilities, good efficiency, not the best, and reaches its score because of its performance and autonomy, but not so in the other two subscores. And finally, the OnePlus Nord CE 5G shows good autonomy, above average in our database, great charging time, and great efficiency. So now we can see how different battery autonomy, charging, and efficiency levels can lead to the same performance within our scoring system, but that the same score can also reflect a different user experience, and is a way of showing the overall battery experience. If one aspect or subscore is more important to you, but also if you'd like to know more about our protocol and how we run our tests, make sure to click the link below. As always, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe for our videos. We'll see you next time. Take care.